Backward failure symptoms, remember, are symptoms of congestion or fluid buildup. And this fluid buildup in right-sided failure, though, unlike in left-sided failure, doesn't happen in the lungs. Where does it happen then? Well, let's think about this circulatory system again for a second. Since the deoxygenated blood's coming from the body, but that side isn't pumping it out as well, it starts to back up to the body. And just like the classic traffic jam analogy, as less cars are let through, they start to get backed up, right? Well, it's the same thing with the heart, but this time the blood's backing up into the body. Alright, so it builds up in the body. But that's pretty vague though, right? Because I feel like there's a lot of places in the body where it could build up. Well, since your feet and your legs are usually the lowest part of your body, right? Gravity tends to cause that fluid to build up in your lower extremities. And it's not uncommon for patients to have this fluid build up and swelling in their ankles. And another area of potential swelling that's not in your lower extremities is actually in the veins of your neck and most visibly in the jugular vein. So remember that veins carry blood to your heart and arteries carry blood away from your heart. And the jugular vein carries deoxygenated blood from your head. So this vein is trying to carry this deoxygenated blood from your head to the right side of your heart. But with backward failure, it's gonna have some trouble doing that, right? And this fluid can start to build up and cause the pressure in these veins or the venous pressure to increase. And this will cause these veins to visibly swell. And more fluid means more fluid weight, right? So it follows that just like left-sided heart failure, some patients might notice that they're gaining weight. And this is due to the extra fluid weight. 